Hello everyone, today we're doing something quite special. There is a really interesting new book coming out called Magical Tarot that really caught my attention. And it seems to be a more proactive use of tarot in operations, be they magical or occult. I just thought what an amazing opportunity it would be before this book releases, because it will be coming soon, that we actually have a moment to talk with the author. Uh, Robin, thank you for being here. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you please me. introduce yourself? So my name is Robin, Robin Valentine, and I'm the author of Magical Tarot. I am a professional tarot reader. Um, that's my career, <laughs> both uh, for myself and through like um, services. And yeah, I wrote this book. It's I'm also a witch, <clears throat> and it was kind of a way that I use in my own practice of combining both tarot and witchcraft, and mm -hmm. uh, that's my whole life. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. I mean, I'm glad that you're committed, right? <laughs> It'd be a lot weirder if you were just like, yeah, I started last week. I live and breathe this stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, it, so uh, my assessment of it, so I kind of had this idea, or at least from what I was reading, is that it really is almost like using tarot as a form of magic rather than like strictly divination or something like that. You yeah, know, which I think absolutely. Many people think is like the main thing you know so it's... and it is technically because when you look at something like what is the main thing right it, that is the general used purpose right so mm -hmm. i do think that divination is the main thing but it it's so it, it can be so much more than that mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh we have i don't want to shit on anybody but <laughs> currently on like especially the internet climate, we have this really serious discourse that keeps coming up about like the rules of witchcraft. And that, that's not new. Like I'm in my thirties. This has been around since I was a teenager and I'm sure before that, mm -hmm. but it is very, very heavy right now. And quite frankly, there are rules, but there also aren't. It depends on your own like path. It also depends on how you're being respectful, etc. And it kind of, my goal with this book was to kind of teach people that they can look a little bit outside of the you know the beginner book box i like that yeah <laughs> so do you do you feel like it's accessible though like for a new person like it would I, still be accessible. i do okay I, my my big thing is is that i don't want people thinking that they're going to pick up my book and think that that my book is to learn how to do tarot for divination. Yes, there is meanings for upright and reversals, but there is the focus is the symbolism within the tarot. Mm -hmm. Because my whole philosophy when it comes to witchcraft is that if you understand why things have the meaning that they do, then like the, the potential and the doors open from there. Yeah. You know, you have all these beginner books that just give you empty correspondence and don't really explain to you why the correspondences have the meanings that they do and i believe that if you understand those things then you can kind of do with that what you want you can play with it you can reapply it to other things you can build your own correspondence and so yes my book has uprights and reversals but it also is mostly giving you the breakdown of the symbolism what that means why the cards have the meaning that they have and then how you can reapply that yeah, yeah, I really dig that, especially the reapplication part. That's super interesting. Yeah, and I, that that was my main focus, <laughs> or my goal at least. <laughs> and I'm guessing it's majorly uh, centered around the major arcana, right? I, I yeah. So the book is focusing on the major arcana. There are um, some sections that touch on the suits in like a very general sense. So, like, you know, the correspondence of wands generally mean this. And I've got a whole section on numerology where then you could apply the two. But the main focus is the major arcana because, first of all, it's my first book. I didn't want to write an 800-page novel. <laughs> and secondly, I didn't want to overwhelm people with too much dry information at once mm -hmm. that they kind of tap out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do know what you mean. I mean, think about it. if you had 500 pages, 600 pages of nothing but symbolism, you're going to lose a lot of people's attention. Yeah, very quickly. They might read <laughs> one or two that find like they find really interesting, but probably right. not the and whole thing. I think that like devout people that are like really, really passionate about stuff like that, I wouldn't lose them. But they also probably already have a like a general understanding of this stuff mm. where they don't really need it then. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point, too. And. 
I was actually kind of curious is like when it came to working with the cards in the way that you you know it seems to be going at least through the book I know we I, I haven't read it right but it has been right. looked at it is finished uh I'm kind of curious like was that an idea that you just kind of had one day like were you sitting there and you were like I could use these in a more proactive way like personally it's because it's no. it's very unique it it is and it isn't so I actually was inspired to write this book. Well, actually, even well before I did, wanted to write the book, I got the idea of using tarot like this from actually a Judica Isles book. Mm -hmm. um, she has that massive book, the like 5,000 spells or 3,000 spells yeah. or whatever it is. And I was flipping through that looking for something. I honestly don't even remember what the spell was at this point because um, this was like five, six years ago. Um, and I had seen one of her spells was using, I think it was temperance or, or justice, um, mm -hmm. in the spell itself. And I like, it was like all of a sudden this light bulb just clicked in my head and I was like, holy shit, why have I never thought about this before? And then I just completely reevaluated everything. And I was just like, this is, this, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> and it became this massive, like, aha moment for me. Where I was like, I don't know why I never thought of this sooner. This this makes perfect sense. And it was just an absolute light switch moment. And it, for me, changed a huge perspective. And it's so funny because the spell that she has written or had written in that book was like three sentences that was just like, use this card with this. Right. And it was just like, I'd never thought of it like that before, but it completely changed everything for me in terms of spell work and like my perspective. <laughs> That's actually super interesting how that one little moment has shifted so much up until yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, that's really awesome. It really is. And, and like I said, I have had this massive philosophy that I feel like people, oh, they, they take things way too much on like a surface value of, well, I read here that, you know, green corresponds with money. And it's like, okay, but why? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But why does it correspond with money? And, you know... Then you, you get into the whole complicated factor of like currencies globally and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, so if we understand why, then we can like rechange stuff to fit our actual needs. And there's chunks of those types of breakdowns in mm -hmm. the book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's I mean, really awesome. Yeah. I mean, the whole awesome. point is if you like, if you look at the symbolism within each card, they are incredibly chock full of symbolism mm -hmm. from the colors to the numerology to like esoteric symbols to freaking landscapes like e literally the landscape of a card itself can have meaning to it oh yeah and so if we just understand those whys then we can take that information and reapply it and like yes my book has suggestions on ways you can reapply it but the goal is that your you know your wheels start moving in your brain mm -hmm. and then you're reapplying that for yourself so it's like very independently driven in that way that is, yeah, that's my goal. And my goal is here's the information. Here's why these things mean the things that they do. Mm -hmm. Here's some suggestions on how I would use it. Like, now you go do it. Right. But the, <laughs> the gates are open, so to say. Yeah, that's that's the goal. <laughs> I dig that. That is really interesting. And it's it's cool to kind of hear this this history and breakdown about kind of how you got inspired to even begin doing that's this. That, and all actually. That. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> I, I will say one of the things is it, it's very heavy on Major Arcana. Do you talk at all about like the standard cards in the deck? You know, anything below the Major Arcana? Like I said, I, t I touch base mm -hmm. on the, the, the minors um, just really, really briefly. But I, I, I don't go into them at all because especially when you look at the suits, you are following a general energy flow right. of like each suit and so there is less independence i guess you could say when it comes to the minors mm -hmm. than the majors or the majors have they are are each independent you know energies etc right. and so that was another reason i didn't really touch on it too much because i felt like it's gonna get really repetitive really quickly yeah well i also was considering the, just how long that could be you know, oh, like you were mentioning you earlier, you don't want to imagine. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, uh, here's my first novel. It's 800 pages long. Let me know what you think. 
<laughs> now, uh, I am curious, uh, what kind of tarot artwork are you using in the text? Is it Rider Waite? Are you using oh your gosh. own? So it's all based off of Rider Waite Smith because that is the symbolism that the book is written off of. Um, in my personal opinion, you should always start with that. Uh, I mean, or, or I mean, unless you go the Thoth direction. But anyway, mm -hmm. you should, in my opinion, start with the foundations and then go from there. So, yes, independent decks and stuff are incredible, amazing. I own like a thousand. I think they're great. Right. <laughs> but I think you sh should understand from the basics. So they are all based off of the right away Smith and I actually got an author or an illustrator Stasia Burrington, who I'm like obsessed with, mm -hmm. and I'd asked her if she would do it, and so she's redone the Rider Waite Smith oh, stylized, and it's so pretty. Here, I'll show you. Okay, I'm actually I'm super. That's one of the main things I was curious about, which I know is very superficial. My favorite of me. card that she did was uh, the devil because he has butt cheeks. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> like I know that's so corny, but like look how good this is. Oh, that actually is super good. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I like that a lot. That's awesome. So it's got all it, it got it covers all of the symbolism that I touch base on, base off the Rider Wade Smith, but she's redrawn it because of like legal reasons and all oh, that. Oh yeah. Of thing. Well it's also I believe it's nice to have like that kind of artistic flair to it. You know, it can be Yeah, I had a very specific specific vision for how I wanted my book to look mm -hmm. and when I tell you that the biggest compliment I've received so far accidentally is people asking me if it's an algorithm book <laughs> has been like because I wanted like I had a vision I didn't want it to look like an algorithm book but I had a vision on how I wanted it to look mm -hmm. and like I had a thought out and it came out that way and I'm so <laughs> yeah yeah well I mean i like I said, I just think conceptually it's very interesting. That was one of the main things that really caught my attention is I had never thought of using tarot in that way before. And I'm, you know, I see now that there, it is there. Yeah. And uh, I was curious, do you find uh, any sort of greater comfort in the operations that you do that involve tarot cards kind of being used this way? Do you feel like it, it's adding some oomph? I, I do, but I, I also know that for myself... Um, like we were talking about before we start recording, mm -hmm. or maybe I already said it. I'm a prof professional tarot reader. That's what I do. That's my career. And so for me, tarot, I am touching tarot cards every single day. Mm -hmm. And so for me, there is a lot of power and energy and just connection mm -hmm. with that. And so in my practice, I find like combining the two to give it that little extra oomph and make it that much more personal and... You See, know what I mean? Like, I like that. there's so much energy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it almost suggests the idea that just by learning more through kind of how you set everything up for people to go into this independent usage of it, that they themselves mm -hmm. can expand that into other areas, you know, which 100%. is... 100%. And that's what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, I, I feel like we have this huge boom in witchcraft and occultism right now, and it's incredible to watch. Like, I love it. But the problem is, is you do have a lot of these people who are brand, brand new, who don't have that discernment yet of, yeah. you know, services, et cetera. And that's no shade to them whatsoever. I was there at one point. I think we all have been there at some point. And the problem is you get these people who are being told things and not, instead of giving information, they're being told like, this means this and that means that. And this is how you do this, that they're so afraid of like, writing their own spells or trying something for themselves because they're, they've they been told how to do things instead of being told how to make the ingredients. You know what I mean? Right, right. And so it, it gives people, I feel like, or I'm hoping, it gives people a little, like, ounce of, you know, confidence to go out there and know that, you know, they aren't breaking the rules by doing something purely for themselves that they created. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got the tools, they got the information, they got the ingredients. So go do it. Like, 
don't be afraid. It'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, I kind of like that there's this inspirational aspect behind it, you know, and I, I agree. I think all good works can have that kind of effect on people. In fact, uh, yeah. we might even say that one day in the same manner, someone will come across your book and it'll do something crazy for them, similar to how you were going through the 5,000 so, spells. I mean, realistically, if even one person were to pick up my book and have their aha moment, that would be more than enough for me. I know what you mean. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> It, that 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 would be more than enough. I just want, I just want people to be a little bit less afraid because we do live in, especially this internet climate where you're so afraid to like do anything wrong because mm-hmm. you might piss somebody off or something off or whatever. And it's like, yes, don't be crazy and like you know, <laughs> I don't know, start off your first spell with something really baneful or something like that. Um. But also, like, don't be so afraid of, like, trying things. Yeah, yeah, definitely expand. You know, which is funny, because I myself have always been kind of weird about a few things, even in the Kabbalah. But I recently decided to stop doing that, and uh, it's been been really elevating. I think it's healthy to be weird about a few things, right? But Oh, oh, no, there's some stuff. (laughs) Yeah, but be weird about, like, everything with this big, broad brush. It's like, well who's making these rules for you like do you even know what why these things have the rules that they do and i don't know that that's what i want people to kind of question more i'm hoping that they see this and they go oh my gosh i didn't realize that there was all this information here i wonder what else is out there that i know of that has a bunch of deep rooted information that i'm just not aware of Mm -hmm. and maybe that will help me you know try something new (laughs) yeah yeah that's fun uh that's fantastic (laughs) can't talk (laughs) well uh i i guess we've really covered so much i think one of the few things i could really bring up at this point is just is there anything that you feel like people need to know going in or do you feel like we've really covered because i feel like you you know covered a lot of good stuff yeah i mean i i feel like we've covered it all i know that my book is very cutesy on the cover it's pink it's purple the artwork is cute nothing wrong with that yeah but there's nothing wrong with that and i think that's the big thing is that not everything needs to be like gloomy goth stuff i love goth shit i love the dark gloomy things but also you don't need to be a goth to be a witch you don't need to be a goth (laughs) to be an occultist I thought it came with a black shirt. I know. (laughs) I actually have like a cloak and it's (laughs) black on the outside and the inside is sparkling pink. (laughs) Oh, gosh. That's awesome. Uh, Eat me. (laughs) Right. Well, Uh, for those who are interested, uh, when does the book come out? So it comes out May 18th um, and it's available basically every major bookstore um, that you can get your hands on it i know worldwide there's a couple spots that it's not available yet or whatever and Mm -hmm. those people i say go to my publisher fairwinds or cordo they're the same same thing and you can buy directly from them (laughs) all right awesome and for those who are also interested uh you can also follow tired witch robin on twitter i know that you are on twitter yes i'm on twitter as tired x witch And I'm on Instagram and TikTok as a tired witch. Okay. All right. Well, hey, look, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited. I am going to pre-order your book because I want to, I want to check it out. So uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you. No problem.